Uh, hello guys, it is me, the Tank Index here. Last time we covered the Renault FT, which also happened to be my favorite tank design. Moving on from French tanks onto a new uh, playlist, the German tank series. I will be talking about the only real German tank design actually produced in World War One. Um, we'll talk later about some designs that are technically made but not really finished. Um, for now, we're just going to be talking about the Sturmpan Sturm. Panzerwagen A7V. Just a warning, I cannot speak German. Uh, I can speak Polish, but that doesn't exactly translate, despite Poland being taken over by Germany. Uh, you know, a pretty notable time. Um, <coughs> World War II. But, um, yeah, we're going to talk about the Sturm Panzerwagen A7V. If you are prone to heart attack due to mispronunciation, do not watch this video. I recommend skipping this one. On to the history, which is pretty interesting. Um, Brit Once British tanks appeared in September 1916, the German War Ministry founded the Algermines Kriegsdepartment Abteilung 7 Werkerswesen, or in English, which I can actually speak, the General War Department Section 7 Transportation. The department was essentially tasked to inst investigate tank development. The job was to design a German tank that was, uh, was given to a famous automobile designer, Joseph Vollmer, who would also design all of Germany's World War One tanks, so you'll be hearing his name a lot during this series. It was directed to weigh about 30 tons, cross stitches up to 1.5 meters, have at least a front and rear cannon, as well as supplementary machine guns, of course, and have a 7.5 mile per hour top speed, or around 12 kilometers, which would be faster than the 5 uh, miles per hour of the um, British tanks. The Austro-Hungarian Army supplied examples of an armored American Holt tractor for the tank's running gear. And in December 1916, the ta task was also extended to build a universal chassis that could also serve as a cargo carrier, which would become the Uberlandwagen, which we'll also talk about in this video. Um, the first prototype was tested on April 30th, 1917, and a final version mock-up was created in May. That was demonstrated with 10 tons of ballast to simulate the armor weight because they were not going to put armor on a wooden mock-up. During the final design, however, the rear cannon was replaced with machine guns, only the front having an actual cannon on it. Um, the first pre-production A7V was produced in September and the first real model in October. The uh, 20 tanks produced were given to assault tank units 1 and 2, each with 5 officers, 109 and uh, 109 combined NCOs and soldiers. The name A7V was designed from the organization Abteilung 7 Werkersfermen, Jesus Christ, and Sturmpanzerwagen means armored assault vehicle. As for the actual tank statistics, I apologize for stretched images, it weighed 33 tons, it had a nine mile per hour top speed on roads, but only four but on cross country, which was matched by the German, which was matched by the British ones. It had a single 57mm gun and 6 MG08 machine guns on it. It had a massive 18 man crew which I believe is the biggest ever in any actually adopted tank. With a commander, a driver, a mechanic, an assistant mechanic who also served as a signaler, 6 machine gunners, 6 loaders for those machine guns, a 1 main gunner, a main loader, and even though this crew size seems massive, it might have also been packed with extra men up to an insane 21. Oh yes, that is crazy indeed. As for the armor, it had unhardened armor of 20mm side, 30mm frontal, and 10mm roof. It could handle machine gun fire and rifle rounds, but was susceptible to field guns, artillery, or large caliber and armor piercing rounds found in machine guns. But in its defense, so were the British tanks that it was opposing in any tanks for World War One. Um, a modified design was planned called the A7BU with sponsons and all around tracks along with a rhombo uh, a more rhomboid design to mimic the British tanks and their m maneuverability which was desired by the Germans. However, only one was actually made here and it was never actually produced. Um, On to the Uberlandwagen. The Uberlandwagen was the supply slash cargo carrier version of the A7V chassis hull. It had a max speed of 8.1 miles per hour and a two-man crew of a driver and an assistant. A production run of 30 was planned and by late September 1917, an experimental column of eight Uberlandwagens 
what which was called the Army Craft Wagon Colon or up uh, number one 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 one. Jesus, I hate German. And it was sent to northern France in November with reports saying they were effective and proved their job of moving equipment up to the front well. They remained in service until the end of the war, used mainly for transport. After World War, the Free Corps used two of these with a, a modified machine guns with armor in 1919 to quell civil or unrest, which could be seen on the lower right, that one being named Haiti. Which I'd love to see this thing in a video game because that looks absolutely awesome. Um, the history of the A-70 after the war is pretty bleak. There is only one surviving model of a tank, it, called the Mus model called the Mephisto in Australia, which I'll actually make a whole video on because the story of the tank is interesting. Um, there's one static replica in a museum that you, you doesn't actually move, and there's one um, mock-up of it, which it does actually move around and has an engine on it, model after Schnook. Um, there was a popular myth that France gave some A-70s to Poland, and they fought with them in this Polish-Soviet War in 1919-1920. But this makes no logical sense at all, and is completely false due to all uh, 20 of the tanks having their history recorded, and we know what happened to them. Um, along with no photographic evidence to actually prove this. The design on the A-70V is also present on the 1921 Tank Memorial Badge team above, which was given to all World War I German veterans who so served as tank crewmen, because they did capture a lot of Allied tanks and use those as well. As for the final assessment of the tank, the Sturmpanzerwagen A-70V would have never been a good design. Um, it just took too much manpower, money, and manpower. It just took too much... Oh, I should have typed in manpower twice. Crap. Um, they were just too big. Yeah, I spelled it too well. I'm sorry, I made this at 2 a.m. in my defense. Um, they were just too big even for trench warfare and just not mobile enough compared to British land ships. While these tanks did serve an important purpose for the Germans in holding back Allied tanks, such as the Second Battle of Villers-Bretonne, there just weren't enough of them compared to the thousands of Allied tanks at present. Um, there are more captured Allied tanks used than actual German ones with the German army, and these 20 designs wouldn't have changed that. However, in their defense, they did kickstart German tank development and gave them experience with the concept, which was better than nothing, and for that, these tanks served a more important role than actual combat. I hope you enjoyed the video. Next time, I will I'll be making a video on the first ever tank duel at the second, previously mentioned Second Battle of Villa Bretonne. Bretonne. I promise I'll figure out how to pronounce that by then. But until then, I will see you guys next time.